Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Three Principles Global Community webinar. The Three Principles Global Community, or 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization that's committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles as introduced by Sydney Banks to people throughout the world. Today, we have Dr. Mark Howard with us. And Mark is the founder of the Three Principles Institute in Belmont, California. He's recognized as one of the pioneers who first brought the three principles into the field of psychology. And since 1982, he has been teaching private clients, families, business professionals, um, and he's now devoting his time to mentoring and supporting anyone who wishes to share the principles with love, clarity, and impact. Mark, thank you so much um, for joining us. It's been too long, and I'm, I'm so happy that you're you're um, being coming on this webinar today. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Um, well, it's so nice to be here and see all of you. And some of you I know and have talked to. So hopefully I could do justice today to the, to the topic I'd like to share with you. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll share for a while and then I love an interactive uh, session. So I'll share for a while and then just kind of open it up to people who might have questions or thoughts you want to share. Oh, Bonnie, how long are we going? Um, We're scheduled for an hour, but an if hour. You, yeah, if you if we run over and you have the time, then I'm fine to stay on as well. Okay. So um, I do. I'll, um, my exercise now is to walk and I walk through my neighborhood in the community here. Um, and I listen to Sydney Banks as I walk. And it just hit me a few months ago, the profound simplicity of mental health. That, you know, what he points us to, there's a simplicity to it. And a lot of people have taken the simplicity aspect of it and run. You know, they say, oh, I know enough now. I get that. And the other part, though, that, you know, came to mind for me is that there is this simplicity. There is this kind of sense of his teachings where we get it. And yet um, there's a profound element. There's a profound element to everything he shared with us that really... Uh, asks us to continue to listen, to, can you, to continue to keep our eye toward what we have found already and really deepen our understanding. So I just wanted to share that with you today, my thoughts around that uh, sense that came to me. And, um, you know, um, the first thing that has been really impactful to me from day one that, can, that I continue to evolve an understanding for is um, Sid sharing with us that we have mental health within us right now. Uh, right now, as all of us are here listening to me, we, are, we have mental health. We're in that. We have that spiritual energy that we're calling mental health. And by the way, um, Mental illness and mental health, those are just ideas, really. They're just some ideas people have come up with to describe people's, uh, what they notice about people. And the other thing about them is they're really describing a person at a certain level of consciousness, right? They're at a certain level of understanding. So the more, uh, the more understanding we have, the higher level of consciousness we rise to we move more toward positivity, toward what we would call mental health. Um, and, and so it said those, um, the range of, of our level of consciousness is infinite. So we can always um, understand more. So um, it's way beyond anything people can imagine. But anyhow, the first thing that really impacted me and I still live with it and and work from it and uh, live in my life from it is that all of us have within us right now what we call mental health, happiness, well-being, peace of mind. It's already, we're already in it right now. 
and then sits it were it not for your silly beliefs, you know. So were it were it not for our thinking, we would we would experience it very deeply right now. Now, when I first heard that, the first evening I listened to Sydney Banks, it it resonated with me. It was impactful. But you know, I didn't know what to do with that, but it, it really shifted me um, immediately. And I didn't know that it had um, in terms of really influencing the way that I worked with people. As um, I was, a, I, was a, I am a psychologist and my early work was clinical work with people who came to see a psychologist in a medical setting. But, but to, to really just sit with, we already um, are mentally healthy. We already um, have all of the knowledge we need to live happy and to realize our true spiritual nature right now was profound. I mean, I, I didn't know what to do with that uh, early on. And now as this has evolved within me, I live more from it and there's still much more to see. Just the impact of that in my life was, first of all, for me to see that I, I am already healthy and uh, that I could really begin to look for that within myself. And it helped me with my habits of thought that would, I don't know, evaluate how I'm doing, uh, be judgmental of how I acted. And um, I started to realize thinking in that way was taking me away from this beautiful consciousness I, I am. And it also helped me in my relationships to see that everybody in my life, my wife, son, friends, everyone really had within them at every moment uh, uh, health, well-being. I'm just calling it mental health, but it's beyond mental health. Uh, but I'm using that as the word that, you know, is part of my title. Um, and that really changed the way I was in life with people. When you could really see that people have within them love and understanding, happiness, well-being, the way I operated in life with them um, came from a different place in me. Rather than following my um, fixed ideas about who they were, I kind of sat more in, you know, they have everything within them. Um, they're the same as me. That's kind of how I early on um, use um, the sense of, of, of this point. In my work, I saw it every day with the people that would come to see me for help. Just recently, I um, completed um, two years of working in an inpatient psychiatry setting for a university here locally. I have stopped that now. But but these were people who were really in a severe place of uh, mental suffering. I mean, really in the, in the worst, uh, um, I don't know, worst aspects of that because of their level of insecurity and lack of understanding and really believing the, the very uh, um, frightening thoughts that they were living in. And so, um, I noticed that when I met them for, you know, when I met these patients in, in the hospital, I really saw them in terms of the fact that they are okay right now. Now, um, that isn't, doesn't mean I didn't ignore what they were kind of struggling with or how they were acting, but I approached them from a really, um, coming from a, from a place of really seeing the fact that they were healthy and that that was there for them. And it really surprised me. Um, you know, here I am almost 40 years into this understanding, you know, seeing this all across the board with people, but it, it really surprised me 
how people would relate to me, even though they're caught up in really delusional thinking, disorganized thinking, really agitated um, kinds of behavior, that they would respond to me saying hello from knowing they were truly mental health, that they had it within them to see life in a way that they could transcend what they're dealing with now. And it surprised me because, you know, um, some people were so agitated and so many fearful thoughts, they would continue to walk the hall to try to feel better. And I would say hello and I would work, walk with them and, and uh, people who could um, talk were able to talk with me. In fact, people would joke with me. And uh, again, you know, when you're in this feeling that, that these people have everything like, we, like you have within them, that they're the same as you in that regard, um, you're easy with, with people like this. You can give them hope. And uh, I know that I would, uh, you know, easily joke with them. And I would really give them hope. So people, I mean, some of the people were really so in, into a troubled state that they would throw things out of their room into the hallway. And I would be asked to go in to see if I could be of help. And all, the only thing that, that was really helpful for was for me to be in there, I guess to me in the feeling of love, but also to, rem, to help them see they're safe that even though they can't really take that in right now, they were safe and we're gonna take care of them. And coming from that place really helps people. So I, I just wanted to share that first impactful um, understanding that Sid shared with us and continues to share with us in his books and in his audios that everyone right now at this moment is mentally healthy. And when you look at yourself from those eyes and you look at others from those eyes, the way you are in life changes. And um, even though you can't intellectually awaken that in you, knowing, having some feeling that that's true already has shifted you. And that will continue to evolve in you. And if you keep an eye on that, uh, more will come to you. Um, that's all I did was just continue to uh, listen to Sid and uh, read. He only had one book out at that time, Second Chance, and just read that. And um, I learned as I went, uh, I went along in terms of seeing what my patients in the clinic could do, what they could come to. And you would see this surprising emergence of health from people in the, in the full range of, of mental suffering at that time, you would just see the expression of this health um, in various ways in their lives. One example of that early on. Um, early on, I was directing a, an addictions program for this psychiatry clinic. And when people are coming off of a month of heavy alcohol use, they don't look good. So they would come to my two week class in the afternoon and they were all disheveled. Their clothing was wrinkled. Uh, they could hardly speak clearly. We, we, I would talk from this understanding, honest to God. In three days, a person this way comes in, neatly dressed, hair combed and able to express themselves. And these kinds of things really um, solidified for me. People are more than their troubled state of mind. They are, there is health there and it will emerge. Uh, on, it will just emerge if you give room for it. So that was the first thing I just wanted to share with you today. There's more we could talk about with that for sure, but. I wanted to go on to a few other points around the profound nature of, of mental health. The other thing that was really profound for me that has a simplicity to it is that um, I woke up to the fact 
that the feelings I was struggling with and was trained in tra traditional ways to get people to, to get into, to express, to not defend against, to bring it out, bring out all your feelings. Um, that was in, in my training, the traditional way of handling people's feelings in those days. Um, they were real, they were something. Uh, people needed to take care, they needed to really realize all the feelings they were having. And so what I realized in an instant from what Sid was sharing is that that's made up. Those feelings are made up. They're just the result of thought. And that really um, impacted me. And it still just really touches me deeply to see that our experience of life moment to moment is being created through these principles, through this spiritual energy and thought is really the principle that creates our form, you know, creates our thinking and everything else that follows. And to, you know, it looks simple to people. Uh, oh yeah, it's my thinking. But this is not your thinking. The principles are not about your thinking. That's already after after they're giving you something you know the, again it doesn't work this way it's just the way i'm expressing it your thinking is in form the principles are formless sid said at the video that was shown at the three principles uk conference uh, i call them spiritual because they're formless and um, what you want to see is that the principles express themselves through you and they allow you to create form. They allow you to know your life. Through thought, you can see your life around you. That's what they're given to you for, is so that you can live this life and see the beauty around you. Um, but the fallout of, of uh, the operation of these principles is everything that happens to you once you engage a thought, once you engage your thinking. All that follows from that. And that first uh, um, month or two of listening to Sydney Banks, I saw that these feelings we were trying to get people to honor, to um, experience more of, were just made up. You know, they're like, there's not, they're not really, they're only the result of a person's way of thinking. And, um, so that was prof that 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 was profound. That and it still is profound. To to tell to you about the why it's profound is because, although it looks simple, um, to understand thought, no one, no one, really sees thought. No one really sees that spiritual energy. You have glimmers of it but there's just much more to see about what that energy is, is about. So what that did for me is it, it, it brought me to look within me. It, once I really saw that my experience, moment to moment of, of people in my life, of myself, of my job, was really being created from within, and not within, you know, there's like no within that you could <laughs> intellectually go to, right? You know, it's, it's kind of a consciousness is what I've kind of seen now. It's a, it's a place in you that you have a feeling for, that uh, your experience is coming from within you by way of these principles. And you get a feeling for that so that you can bring yourself back to what you understand of that. What you understand from that is really um, what you wanna keep coming back to and live in because um, before that, like everybody else, um, I thought all my feelings and experiences were coming from everything outside of me. So that was the power of, um, 
understanding uh, how um, feelings are just a reaction for thought. Now, the other profound aspect is um, you're not a robot. You're not a robot because as Sid said on that video, once you get a flavor, once you get an insight, a little knowing of where your experience comes from, you get freedom of thought. He called it freedom of thought. It's that you can think any way you want to think. You see, you're not wedded to your learned thoughts. You're not wedded to your insecure thoughts. Um, and that's different because a lot of psychology is based on people living in their conditioning. They call it a personality. But you're not a solid personality. You're a state of consciousness. You're a, a, a level of thinking, you see? And, and so, so what you get then is that you can transcend. You can transcend whatever you think you are. You know, so if you're somebody who says, well, yeah, I'm just a depressed person or yeah, I don't get along well with anybody. Uh, oh yeah, I'm always being taken advantage of. Oh yeah, I'm a worrier. Oh yeah, I'm a joyful person. Oh yeah, I'm a generous person. You, with this understanding to look within to where the principles create your experience, as you get more understanding of the role of thought, you get freedom to think any way you want to think, and you have the possibility to get thoughts that take you beyond what you've learned, beyond, you know, when you're born, you come into the world and you, you're taking in all of the level of consciousness of the people around you, your family and friends, and you pick up ideas and you start following them as real. So that's the profound, for me, the profound nature of thought is that when you catch it um, and you look away from your usual way of thinking because of it making sense to you, you're given a new way of thinking. Uh, you're given other thoughts. You're given the freedom to not think in your habitual way. So isn't that something? And there's more to see around that, I think, for the rest of your life, because Sid says your level of understanding is infinite. But for me, that's the profound understanding that has continued to evolve in me. And what I have seen the promise of, every human being could see that. Every human being is capable of seeing where their experience comes from, not intellectually. That's our work if you're sharing the principles is your, your work is really to help people, guide people to the fact that this is an understanding, not an intellectual practice because you can never really intellectually get yourself to the understanding of, of the spiritual energy we call thought. It can only come through a realization of the knowledge in you, you already hold. The minute it comes in, it changes you. The minute people on the call in your life that you're looking to, oh, my thinking must be off. You've already been a changed person. There's, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that don't think their thinking is off, you know, <laughs> like I did until I came to this understanding. I thought my thinking is right, you know. My wife is wrong, you know, <laughs> and uh, I'm just making a joke here about that, you know, but that's how I used to think until I realized, wow, you know, my thinking is causing my misery. And it's also the source of the, the deepest happiness I can find. So that's the other piece I wanted to share with you. And I wanted to share, I'm, I'm going through this. Um, and I can feel like it's, it's quickly because we could spend so much time on each point I've shared with you. But this is just what came to me on that walk. And I wanted to share it with you all. 
The other piece is um, that really, really hit me, the simplicity of mental health. Look, being trained as a clinical psychologist, um, my goodness, you know, you thought you saw all these things people had to had to learn and go through and analyze before they could find what we thought was a mental health. But when Sid shared that mental health is contentment, it, it really blew my mind. It's that simple. And I, am, I was just blessed that I could really hear that. And uh, I've been evolving the understanding of what he meant by that. But what I have seen now is for you all too, if you've had a moment of contentment, if you've had a moment of living surrounded by the feelings we call contentment, it's kind of like a space. For, it's just a place you're in. Uh, Sid would say like a consciousness, huh? huh? But here's the quality of it. You're not thinking of yourself. When I've looked at that through the years of, of wanting to see that more and more, that's what I've noticed. When I've fallen into a feeling of contentment, a feeling of, like he would say, pure love, um, I'm, just in, I'm just surrounded by these feelings. And I don't think... I'm not thinking of me, and that's mental health. Honestly, if we could stop thinking about ourselves, we would be in these feelings quite naturally. Um, it's the thinking about ourselves, either in our self-judgments, our evaluations, uh, you know, our shoulds, our ought tos, you know, all of that. Honestly, we're, we'll be in it in a moment, just like that. And uh, what helped me get to this, I'll just share with you a story about this because it speaks to what's available for you to find an answer, but it also um, is a way for me to share this a little deeper with you. Um, when, uh, when I was working in the addictions field, I was creating um, an idea about how to bring the, what the principles would say about addictions. And I was kind of creating what I called the addiction cycle. And, and at that time, the way I thought of it is um, people are in bad feelings and then they go do view some alcohol or drug to get out of those bad feelings. And that's how I would present it to groups. Well, this one day I was presenting that to this group and somebody raised their hand and said, well, Mark, I don't have a bad feeling when I use. When I use this, we'll call it a drug, you know, this drug, I'm in a good feeling. I feel good. I just want to get higher. Now, again, you know, I'm wedded to my thinking, right? You all may know this as you're teaching and coaching, you know, you get thrown a curve, <laughs> you know, like in my thinking about my ideas, I didn't know how to answer that. Um, I was in a way, I just was thrown by that because I had a way of thinking about how it should go for people. Um, you may already know <laughs> what to say to that. I didn't at that time. Now, here's the good, good news is that we had a lunch break. Um, true story. We had a lunch break right at that question. So I saved myself, <laughs> you know, 90 minutes by going to a lunch break. But here's what I did from my experience of how uh, our understanding, the wisdom within us, the intelligence of mind can help you. I, I did not try to, to figure that out with my intellect. I just quieted down and kind of stayed reflective and, and really just tried to see what might come to me from wisdom. And I'm walking around and all of a sudden what appeared in my mind was Sid saying mental health is contentment. That came to me. The wisdom, this intelligence of mind will just give you um, what you need. 
So that I had no thinking about that of Sid saying that until I just got reflected. And then what came to me was um, that's what it is. Contentment is this beautiful feeling that when you're in it, you don't want to get higher. You're not thinking about getting higher. So that came to me over the course of, of lunch and just being in a reflective state. And that was the answer. When you're truly in what we are, the, the feelings of contentment, that's our true nature. The feeling of love and understanding, pure love, not about you or not about contentment because everything's going well in your life. It's deeper. It's, see, it's more profound than what our intellect could come up with about contentment. But when you're in that space of feeling, uh, you don't want more. You don't want more. As Sid says, you're satisfied with what is. Again, you're not satisfied because you just got a new car or you know, you're know you debt-free, uh, although those may be good things. This isn't that. It's not form. It's not in form. It's not in your thinking. Your my Mark Howard thinking. So when you're there, um, you don't want more. You're 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 fine. You're at peace. You're at ease. So that was the answer. That was the answer for that question. And I went back and I shared to the group. When you're talking about feeling good, and you want more. You're in your ideas of feeling good. Uh, you're in some idea of yourself being in a good place. And when you're there, you always think, well, I could feel better. But I, I want to share with you, I told him what, what, what Sid Banks shared, and I want to share with you what came to me is you're in this feeling of contentment. It's beyond what you could think for yourself is good. And when you're in there, you don't feel you're lacking anything and you don't need more. Your mind is at peace. And people really, they, they really resonated with that. And so, um, so um, anyhow, I just wanted to share with you that story about how I really saw it more deeper because I was kind of challenged with my idea of why people would go outside of themselves to feel better. But it also showed that all of us, all of us, whenever we're presenting or sharing or working within this understanding, if you kind of get lost, you could come back and just be reflective and really see that the intelligence of mind, you being part of mind, will guide you. Um, so that's how profound that is, how profound contentment is it's more than we can think it really is it, that's really literally the truth what our, our natural uh, feelings that we're born with that are with us our whole lives are much more than we can think and they come um, they just awaken in you you start to realize that when you're in a moment of goodwill, when you're in a moment of tenderness, when you're in a moment of gratitude, you're there. And you start to just recognize the expressions of the, the, the world of contentment in your daily life. And, um, but, you know, again, you know, people could take the idea of contentment and make up what it means for them as a good feeling. But it's way beyond a good feeling. It's a state of consciousness. It's a level of consciousness that we are born with and can always um, have available to ourselves. And, and it has nothing to do with us personally. Um, and it's like infinite, infinite. The happiness and peace and contentment you can find is like uh, way beyond whatever you found so far. Because, you know, 
the proof of that is as we're sitting here uh, or as you go about your daily life, you're not in, you may not be in the feeling of contentment. Why? As Sid says, well, because you get drawn into your silly beliefs. But just to know that, isn't that something just to know that, oh my God, I'm away from those feelings. I'm away from the feelings I want with my partner, with my children, just to know that that's just your silly beliefs. It's just your insecure thinking. That alone has saved millions of people. Now, with how this understanding has spread internationally, and so that's like the th that this is kind of a thrilling discovery. So that's what I wanted to share with you around uh, the profound nature of this, the 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 simplicity of mental health on one level, and thank and th and being thankful for the fact that it look it looks simple to us. That kind of shares we know something, but to see there's just more and more um, available for us to see at a very, very profound level of understanding. So I hope that made sense to people. I wanted to give time to hear from you um, and any questions you have or any thoughts you wanted to share. There, there is a hand up, but I, but, um, Isabel had a question as we were um, connecting. So we'll start with her. And then uh, um, Bonnie, I see that Joe over here has a hand up. Um, so let's just start with anybody who's got any questions, just unmute yourself. Isabel, do you wanna get started? You know, I, I know I've asked this question a lot, and I, I, I appreciate you, you know, being willing to entertain my, still this, this unsettled part of me that um, is looking at the practice of psychological you know, diagnosing in the clinical world. And this idea of these silly beliefs and the, the judgments or the, the idea of lack as, as the clinical world continues to practice that, are they not engaging in the same, the same behaviors as what they call their, their patients or their clients? And I, I'm, I'm just visioning how we move beyond that. And is that part of the evolution of this? And what's the opportunity for the 3P world as well? Uh, even those of us who you know, do have these supposed doctorates in psychology, whatever that means. Um, it's that, are, are we, are we the, that egoic, erroneous, kind of just silly believing people who are still holding on to some of those things, but still trying to, to tell people you're never broken, never, you know, never this, never that, that you're, you have well-being there seems to be one foot on the gas and one on the brake for me when I, when I see this and hear this. And, I, and it keeps coming up for me and that's why I'm continuing to bring it up in these forums that we have um, for you know, my own deeper understanding and clarity on it as well. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that, Mark. Thank you for entertaining the thought too. So um, there would be more I would want to hear from you um, and we can do that at some other way. But let me just share what I kind of resonated with. Um, um, there's an innocence really to uh, people who work clinically in mental health and uh, um, kind of are wedded to approaches and uh, diagnoses that um, uh, without the realization that, that people are mind that you know that people are mind and you could see through education there isn't an opportunity for people who are called into this work to get that um and uh, so there's an understanding to have 
the other piece in my work, particularly coming back, it's, I've been away from psychiatry and psychology, social work and nursing in psychiatry um, until I went to this inpatient unit. And they are coming from kind of outside in models, uh, models that try to change people's thinking with strategies. Um, uh, but everyone that I worked with wanted that their, their patients to get better. And they can only use what they understand at their level of consciousness, right? They can only use what they can understand might help somebody get better. But I saw that their hearts were in the right place. And like me, until I had the good fortune to connect with uh, this understanding, it looks like that's the truth. Um, you know, so they're, they're doing all they can do given the thinking they're in and their level of understanding they're in to actually help somebody feel better. And uh, I, I've seen the kind, kindest nurses and psychiatrists, but they're lost in the models that are still out there that you know people need to have strategies to change the way they think, um, which is like the predominant one now. And um, they need to really, um, you know, this, these new ideas about trauma being, you know, uh, in the, in, within the cells of people's bodies and they need to really go back, you know, those kinds of things. It's just, to me, um, the innocence that people in the field trying to do their best are still at that same level of consciousness going sideways. They're going sideways. A new idea has come from that understanding of human humanity. So they do, um, they do like tapping or they um, do um, give people 15 ways to untwist their thinking. So new things come about, but it's at the same level of consciousness. And so you do your best to um, uh, have, it, you know, have influence when you can. But again, what I have, what's really helped me in working many years with um, psychiatrists and psychologists is for me to see their hearts in the right place. They're just like every human being lost at a level of understanding. And um, they don't really have um, the sense everybody on this call today, it knows that people have within them um, health that it's there right now. They have happiness and well-being within them. The other piece I saw just really briefly, because I want to get to the next question, is you know, um, you're trying to help somebody that's really uh, seriously troubled. And um, you know, you're trying to, to kind of at your level intervene with whatever works at that level. And um, so I hope that helps with what you were asking. Um, you know, diagnosis is still a big part of treatment in psychiatry. Uh, they don't realize they're just um, looking at somebody at th that person's level of understanding, their level of consciousness. So that isn't in their knowing. So um, anyhow, I hope that helps. And if you'd like to talk more, you know, shoot me an email. Thank you for that. Um, shall we go to Joe? Joe, you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, thanks. You know, thanks, Mark, for uh, sharing. And, and uh, my question and then an observation I want to make builds in uh, nicely with what you just talked about with Isabel is, um, uh, you know, for folks with PTSD, right, you know, that have a startle response, it sure doesn't look like uh, feeling follows thought. You know, if it is, it's almost instantaneously. What are your What are your observations around uh, PTSD with people with a startle response and uh, 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 so forth? Where there certainly doesn't seem like there's a gap between okay, they thought something and then they're reacting this way. 
So once again, you know, when, when you have questions like that, you want to go back, what's the truth? Nothing a person experiences can occur without the principles in that moment. Now, we don't understand the instantaneous actions of that. We don't get it. I mean, it's like, that's what's profound. But you have to go back to a person cannot react behaviorally, emotionally, verbally, um, without that moment being created by the principles. Now, we think it's thinking, but really, I'm not sure, but you just have to go back to that mystery. Okay, so you go back to that mystery and just keep yourself looking at uh, trying to make sense of that, you know? Now, when somebody, is, when it's so instantaneous like that and somebody is thrown into that response, the first thing really, in, the first thing is to try to help them kind of uh, ease that. So whatever can come to mind to try to help them ease that, uh, because no one who gets into a startle response and is in that um, in that in that um, experience now is going to be able to really hear something. Now they may, but it's going to be difficult for them to kind of really be in the connection with you, um, where you can have impact. Where you can have impact is in the feelings you have for them, is in knowing that they're, they're, um, they're fine beyond um, this habit of thought that came to mind, this insecure th thought, and, um, and uh, try to help them settle as, with it with every way you can uh, until they're outside of that response. But in terms of... Um, uh, of looking at how it happens like before we can even know it happens, you know, to me, that's a mystery. But when you uh, start thinking about it, take yourself back before thinking. Yeah. There's always something. There's not always something. Um, whatever you're seeing has, uh, has been created by this spiritual energy. It's been manifested through this energy. And um, you wanna keep looking there. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And then the, the, the experience I wanted to share uh, uh, with everyone was uh, when I first heard about the principles that we live in the experience of our thinking, it helped me more connected dots. Uh, back 25 years ago, I had a panic attack at work. I thought I was having a heart attack. Right, and I had my assistant, you know, call nine one one, and the paramedic said something profound to me. Uh, he said, "Hey, listen, this is going to sound really counterintuitive, but if this happens again, what I want you to do is to get on the floor and let yourself go. Now you're going to think that you're dying. You're not, but you'll go unconscious, and your vital signs will reset almost automatically because your thinking mind will shut down." And I thought there's a great example of how we live in the experience of our thinking, right? The thinking mind shuts down, the vital signs reset, you know, he said almost instantaneously to that, even though your blood pressure and everything else is spiked, you know, from the, uh, uh, from the panic attack. Thankfully, I've never had to practice that. I've never had one uh, again, but I thought that was a really, really good description of just let yourself go and your vital signs. It shows how the body follows thinking. Thanks for your wisdom today. Well, thank you, Joe. Um, anybody else with a question? Anybody else with a thought you want to share? Hello, Mark. This is Veena here. I'll start a video in a minute. It's almost gone dark here in the UK. Um, thanks for your time uh, this evening, Mark. My observation, and maybe it's... Um, I don't know, you, I, I want to hear what your comments on my observation has been. So as a principal, I've only known the principles like for three months, but because of my upbringing, spiritually, the some level of knowledge was there, like we creating our reality and, and so on. So one of the things that I noticed was, while we tend to overthink, I tend to overthink, let's, let's put it that way. I tend to overthink and with 
the awareness of the principles now, I'm more conscious of, you know, the, the thinking train, the thought train, and I, I try and mm -hmm. abandon that thought train. So <laughs> it just has the engine and it runs away. But <laughs> equally, there are certain things that I want to explore. So not necessarily overthinking, which is draining, but there are things, topics that I want to understand further. But now I'm more aware that it is my intellect that is trying to help me understand, but I want to tone that down. But having said that, I don't want to drop the topic. So I almost indulge in that in, in a bit for a bit longer, still being aware that, yes, I am thinking, I'm trying to work it out. I shouldn't, but I'm trying to work it out. But I've noticed what happens is things that I want to work out, I leave it there. And like you said, you know, the lunch break, you had that insight coming in from nowhere about how Sid had mentioned that contentment is, um, is what mental health is. Mm -hmm. Like that, I have those moments when, oh, I found the answer to what I was looking for then. So I, they, I have observed a, a, a connection between your conscious, you know, your aware mind rather, the word conscious seems to be quite confusing of late. Um, the, the intellect, when it posts a flag in the mind, then the insight seems, the wisdom seems to follow and help us shed light on those topics. Do you have any comments or am I just making all that up? Well, um, first, um, just being silly with you, when you're on the thought train uh, and it, if it's going fast, don't jump off. You know, you know, no, I, know. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I can't help but act stupid sometimes, you know, but I, did, I just we, had that image. Don't jump off a movie. We need train. humor in life. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I would say is you have the answer. And uh, you, you know, if you could, if there are some topics of life you'd like to explore, you already see that if you don't engage um, your habitual thinking, uh, something shows up that helps you. And um, you also have some protection in that you can see now that, you know, you're overthinking or you're getting too much in your thinking. So realizing that that'll come back to you. You don't have to keep alert about that. So you'll notice, um, you'll notice now that you see this, you'll notice you're thinking too much about it. You're overthinking. But if you have a life topic, I think you just saw um, how to take better care of yourself in looking at that topic. And that is be more reflective, that there is really um, the fact that you are mind, the intelligence that is before creation, it will guide you. It's there to guide you. And whatever you're looking at in life, honestly, it will give you something for that. If you're coaching, if you're in a health profession, helping someone, it's there to help you. It will help you with that. Um, uh, so uh, what you're saying right now is um, just use already what you've seen. And um, I mean, God, if you've already been able to see that an, an answer comes to you without you thinking, uh, that's really what to honor and to keep bringing yourself back to that. Bring yourself back to the quiet of that rather than the busyness of overthinking. So that's what I would share with you. And, um, you know, when I um, uh, worked with people in relationships, you know, and they get back into love and understanding with one another, that solves about 80% uh, of what they thought were problems. They still... Um, have some things they'd like to talk to one another about. And they start learning that they want to be in a good feeling when they talk about it. They want to be in goodwill for each other when they talk about it. And the feeling, as Sid said, in that feeling of love and understanding is wisdom. Isn't that something? You know, I'm, for most of my life, uh, academically, I'm looking for wisdom. And all that I have to do is be in the feeling of love, you know, it's like, I mean, that really, a lot of what he shared with us really has corrected my faulty thinking, but that's what I would, that's how I would 
respond to what you're sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, Bonnie, do we have time for someone else? Yeah, I, if you have time, I can hang out here with you. So I see yeah, I do. I oh, do. Great. I see Thomas and Sarah Fox also unmuted herself. So I'm not sure who was first, but Thomas can go. No worries. Thomas. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Dr. Howard. It's a real pleasure to hear you speak. I've seen a lot of your work, but it's the first time I've been on a live call with you. I, a question came to mind as I hear the profound wisdom of your words, but I know you've been around this understanding for such a long time, I think since the 1980s. If we zoom out, how would you say your understanding differs now than let's say 10 years ago? Yeah, that's a, well, geez, that's a great, great question. And, um, you know, I forgot a lot about how I was, <laughs> you know, it's like, um, uh, let's see, I think um, it's, it's moved more deeply into love and understanding and um, uh, honoring, honoring that, um, that I am this energy, I am mind. Sid would say God, I am mind, but he's using mind so people don't get into their own thinking that I am that. And I could live, um, I could live being guided by that. So there's an audio tape by Sid that he's been talking to a group. And I know in, a, in some small group meetings with him, he would say, you're, you're guided in life. Um, and, and you need to just believe that. And I think that has deepened for me. He's also said something like, there's a flow to life and live in the flow. It gives me the same feeling. It gives me the same feeling that Mark Howard doesn't have to direct the course of his life. Although Mark Howard still gets in the way of that, you know? <laughs> and you, <laughs> you just come and have kind of a, a laugh about yourself, well, you know, once you get out of the detour that you've, you've given yourself, you know, but that's probably what has deepened for me. And um, lately with the two years in this inpatient psychiatry department, I really, really seen there's no exception. There's no exception to um, wisdom showing itself. No exception. I was in a group with a person who could not express themselves, could not talk, suffering from a brain impairment, and was also delusional, wasn't really speaking anything that made sense, okay? Through the whole group. I read um, the forgiveness chapter in the missing link in the group, and some people rose above their disorganized thinking and started to talk about forgiveness in the group, not this person. So uh, with the group ends, I go back to my office, there's a knock on my door and it's this person, mind you, cannot express themselves and is delusional. And she hands me a piece of paper, a note, and she wrote, thank you for showing me the silver lining. Now, now man, if you doubt that there is something we are all a part of, that can bring people beyond the, um, the level they're in at this moment, I mean, that would do it. And so, I, so that's what's deepened for me. Um, and so I, I hope that made sense. It did, thank you so much, Mark, I appreciate it. What touches me is, um, you know, there's this promise that we can, there's this promise that if you just live your life and not really try to follow the principles, you know, or, um, and you just stay open to seeing more, uh, there's, there's an, it, 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 you'll see more. Now, it may not be according to your timeline, you know, there were times when I wish that I would see something 
like an hour from now. And that, you know, and it took like months. <laughs> but again, in the spiritual essence of us, there's no time. I don't know. I just want to, that just came to me this year. I just go to the next question. Um, let's go with Sarah and then Nancy. Okay. For, oh, hi, Sarah. I'm, hi, Mark. Yeah, I, uh, I work in the healthcare industry and see a lot of um, stuff. And I'm, I'm really thankful for lots of things that you have said today. Um, one of the things that has come up is that um, how our biological brains quickly make a prediction. And that's where our feelings kind of, kind of quickly go there and to help keep us safe. And so I'm just wondering from your expertise, um, what you think about that theory of um, that, that immediate response, like when we step, we walk, we don't really think about it anymore. And that in Joe had said something about the post-traumatic stress um, um, that that response, that startle response is our body trying to keep us safe. And I remember Dickin um, said this, this, this phrase, every feeling I have is love in disguise. So I'm just wondering how that plays a role is our, is our brain, that, my, the, that piece of that formed of mind that's helping and keeping us safe in that moment. Is that, is that? I'm just trying to like um, feel feel through some of that. Yeah. So again, you know, once again, let's go back. Yeah. Let's go back. Okay. So what's the truth of this understanding? That um, um, you are a part of this energy that allows you to see something isn't safe that exists before your physical form that exists before brain so um, you always want to keep going back there otherwise you get stuck in trying to figure out the physical but there is something you are that impacts the physical and um cause all of your senses into play, all of that. And you, you want to keep going back there. You just want to keep going. I don't know that. Like, I, here's how I would, <laughs> so you would say, I don't know this, but it really is what the principles are. I am an expression of these um, principles right now in this moment. And um, if I, uh, quickly in a nanosecond see something that re that um, is protecting me that's coming from um, the influence of these principles um, the, the minute you go into physical form it's confusing because uh, in there's a lot of theories about the brain a lot of brain systems are really the cause of the emotions and so forth. But I keep going back to Sid who says, feelings are a reaction to thought. So everything about you comes into play with a creation. The principles create. What do they create? They create you in the moment. Everything that you are in the moment, if you're seeking safety, if you're startled is coming from the act of creation. And you just want to keep coming back there. So you, as you get more of a sense of that, it can help you understand more physical form. So it's not to deny that um, you are a physical form and um, you have sensory reactions. But look at this person I just shared with you about. Her brain was impaired. It, it was called expressive aphasia. It's a brain impairment. Yet she wrote something. She could live beyond. Uh, to me, that's 
to me, I'm in awe. I don't understand. I, I can do, all I can do with that is what I'm sharing with you. You see? So where you look, if you want to go back to the spiritual understanding, you look before uh, your brain works. <laughs> you look, you look before your physical form and then just let it percolate. Sid mentioned that um, years ago in this uh, uh, seminar, I was a part of that feelings are a reaction to thought. And I'm still sitting with that evolving my knowing that. Um, I have a I have a video which was an answer to a question like brain chemistry when I was with a, an event with Michael Neal. Um, if you, if all of you would like that, you just need to email me, email me that or email Bonnie that and I'll send it out to you. I hope that was helpful. It's so you get helpful. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get caught up in those things. You get caught up in like, we got caught up in feelings, you know, and people needed to get get their feelings out to the point. Here's the, how it can get carried away when you just look at the form. In, in the, so this is the 70s. Um, one way for couples to get their anger out, that was the idea, is to give them batakas. You know what batakas are? They're kind of padded plastic bats and kind of attack one another with it, battle with one another. That was a way that came from the idea that feelings had a life of their own. So you could see the beauty of being able to bring people back to the nature of thought and the fact that love and understanding is already there, were it not for angry thoughts. Uh, I see Locke had a question. There was someone else too, one other person. Nancy. Bonnie. Huh? Nancy. Okay. So let's go lock and then Nancy, and then I'll have to stop for myself. Lock? Hi. Hi. Yeah, um, I don't know whether I can communicate this or not, but I want to try it. What, what has really gotten to me, especially lately, is the fundamental principles that Sid puts out, not just Sid, but the Course in Miracles. I mean, you, you can go almost any place where there, who we are is kind of nothing, really. I mean, if I, if I let my thought go, I am totally content, but I feel timeless, spaceless. I feel like, oh, this is what I was before I was born. This is what I'm going to be after I die. It has no lock the corkle in it, but it's still me because I'm you. I'm, I'm everybody <laughs> in, in that sense. And, and, and that's what I use I, I'm, for the rest of you here. Mark already knows this. I'm not a therapist. I try to teach my employee, I'm a businessman who tries to teach this stuff to my employees uh, with some success. So I don't know whether that is a, that to me, when, when fun, in, the, in the missing link where Sid really points this out, he said, the formless has nothing you can grab onto. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and everything else is made up by your thought. So I don't, to me, I can't take anything fundamentally seriously that, it, that I think up or anybody else thinks up because it's just thought up. Well, I think you pointed to, to me, you pointed to uh, the experience I was conveying about when Sid said mental health is contentment and what came to me and trying to make to answer that question that you really are in that moment in this space and in that space I would say you're as Sid said you want to go beyond uh, what he said space time and matter all that is in terms of what I've seen now 
is that you're in these beautiful feelings. You're surrounded by beautiful feelings. People could call them love, but, but in that, you're, you don't think of yourself. So in a way, you're not there, really, but you're there. You're experiencing what is contentment. So that's what I heard, Locke. Now, the other piece is you do live in life. You have a physical form. So you want to take that and you want to take your understanding and live in life. And um, yeah, you're using thought to create a reality at each level of consciousness you are in. Yep. And so like the, to me, the simple example uh, of what you're sharing is prior to this understanding, I would look at my wife and I would say for me, I wouldn't say it this directly. I, well, I, you know, I don't mean it this way. <laughs> But I would think, oh, man, I could be happier if she would fix this and if she would fix that. Mm -hmm. After this understanding, I realized, oh, my God, you know, um, my thinking of that is making uh, my experience of her quite limited. I'm the one um, making myself experience her in this way. And when I started to look through the eyes of uh, everybody is mind and love and understanding um, and was able to kind of move away from my usual habits of thinking of her, I saw uh, this beautiful living being that I was in a life with. And I continue to see more and more and more of that. So, um, so that's what I hear from what you're saying. And when we really do reach moments of love, you could see this in your moments of love. Um, you're not really thinking about yourself. That's what's curative. What's curative is you're in this consciousness where you're not evaluating yourself. And if you stop evaluating yourself, you're gonna feel these feelings. <laughs> uh, one more person, there was Nancy. Yes, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, definitely. I just wanted to say um, how much I've appreciated the depth of what you are expressing and the simplicity. And I want to listen to this um, recording again. Uh, there's so much here. And there was something about, you know, seeing the health. It's, it's not like seeing the health like, yeah, conceptually, everyone is healthy behind all of this thinking. But just really settling into that contentment, that love, and, and just being in that myself. And then being with another person and knowing that that's there with them. It's the most powerful way you could be with someone. Mm -hmm. That's really it. And that's what I would put myself in when I left my office and went to meet the patients on the inpatient psychiatry board. And when you sit with that in you, you sit, in, that's a really beautiful point you made. And you know, you really know it's not conceptual. If it's conceptual, it, it won't do anything for you. Um, but you know, um, they have the capacity to somewhere in their lives at any moment live uh, beyond this troubled state, um, it, it's the most powerful connection you can have. Because mm -hmm. what does it say to us about this? You and the other person are mine. You are mine. You are the principles right now. You're connected to one another spiritually. Mm -hmm. So when you sit in what you just described, Nancy, you sit in it, you're right in that energy. Mm -hmm. yeah and people react to it people want that with one another but the starting point is what you mentioned nancy you mm -hmm. sit in it yeah and 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 the amazing thing to me is that um i guess i've had so much thinking that in order to function in the world i have to go up here in order to 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 function, you know, that I, 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 yet settling into this 
is what I'm getting so clearly that there's where I can function and be most um, connected because that's where we are connected. Yeah. That's where you'll feel the energy of the connection that is already yes. there with yes. life, with everything in life. See, that's where you'll <laughs> get a feel it and a sense of that. Yes, that's where you go. And as, as Sid help, helped me see, there's wisdom there. It mm -hmm. isn't in going to get another intellectual level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's one other thing is just that this room that you're in, there, I don't know if the room is yellow, but there's this light that's just going and flowing all around. I guess it's coming in from the room, but it's been really fascinating to, to hear what you've had to say and see the physical you and this kind of ethereal light, which we all are. And that's just been extraordinary. So thank you so much for everything that you brought to us today. Um, well, it's been wonderful to be with you all. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Uh, it's really been a pleasure for me to share um, what has occurred to me with all of you and, and, um, and hear from all of you too, because I can really hear all of you that have shared a seen something. Mm -hmm. So that's beautiful. Mark, thank you so much. This was such a lovely conversation and hearing the hearing the simplicity that you're seeing is just so helpful mm -hmm. thank you so much i have two things i want to share with everyone um, on tuesday may 11th the next three pg webinar is with marina Barani, and we are doing something new and very exciting and on thursday may 13th we are going to do our first official um, 3PGC Spanish speaking webinar. So excited that, that we're moving in this direction. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Well, you're welcome. Thanks, Bonnie, for having me here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Bye. Thanks so Bye -bye. much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mark. Thanks so much. Great. Thanks so Great much, day. Mark.